guys, it's your boy, Borsa Boy 103. Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Getafe in La Liga after Barcelona's fantastic Copa del Rey final win last weekend. The only competition Barcelona are left in is in La Liga and we are eight games away from winning the league title. And from now on, every single La Liga game for Barcelona will be treated as a final from the coaching staff and the players. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button and start to get the 200 likes in this video. It'll be very much appreciated. And of course, hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by the One Football app. It is an absolutely brilliant football app that I've been using now for the past few years it's the best in my opinion it has everything you need breaking news transfer news videos you have all the matches in the top five leagues in one spot or you can even add more leagues i believe it has 160 different leagues and also you can follow your favorite football team of course for me it's going to be barcelona you can have you know predictions that tells you the next games you have news about it as well you have a nice little place where you can see all the tables for champions league Copa del rey super cup la liga you can have the squad list as well you can see all the first team players at barcelona and some of the barcelona b players as well nice little spot for transfers as well for everything that's linked to just barcelona and during the match there is live voting of the man the match but what i love about this app the most is when we score it tells you who assists it tells you if it's a penalty or an own goal some apps don't do that it's absolutely brilliant of course it has full-time stats as well offside possession it also has news on la liga transfers on la liga and stats as well top score assists red cards yellow cards this is by far the best football app out there and the best part is it's free so top link in the description down below give it a go you won't be disappointed now just before we get into this match preview i want to give you guys a super quick update on the european super league as of right now the european super league has been been suspended and right now there's only currently four teams left in the European Super League and those four teams are Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid and Juventus. All the other teams have officially left the European Super League and right now it has been suspended but there is still a very high chance that Barcelona will leave the European Super League coming in from TV3 saying that Juan Laporta put a clause in which conditions the entry of Barcelona in the European Super League to be decided by their members. If the club members say no, Barcelona will be able to leave without any penalty. So right now it's going to be down to the associates, the members of the club to vote on whether or not Barcelona should go into the Super League in the future. If they say no, Barcelona will be able to leave with no penalties, no problems. If they say yes, we will go ahead with it. But as of right now, the European Super League has been suspended and it won't happen in the next few years or so, but they still plan on doing it in the near future, but Barcelona do have that option to leave the Super League without a penalty. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 10 p.m. local time, which is a very, very, very late kickoff. I'm not sure why they have these late kickoffs this midweek, but anyways, Barcelona are playing at 10 p.m. local time, and this match will be taking place at the Camp Nou, finally back at the Camp Nou, nice to be back at home and the referee for this match has been confirmed. On the pitch, it will be Jorge Vasquez, and on the VR, it will be Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table. Barcelona are currently sat in third place in La Liga on 65 points. After playing 30 matches, they've won 20, lost five, and drawn five. If you look at our last five games in the league, we've won four and lost one, but that one loss did come against Real Madrid. Real Madrid currently sat in place in La Liga on 67 points, and Atletico Madrid are currently in first place on 70 points, and Sevilla are in fourth place on 64 points, only one point behind Barcelona. But if you look at our three opponents in Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, and Sevilla, they've all played one more game than Barcelona because last weekend we were in the Copa del Rey final, so we did not have a La Liga game, which means that Barcelona do have an advantage right now. And if Barcelona wins all the remaining games in the league, we will be La Liga champions after Real Madrid dropped points in the last league game. The league title now is back in Barcelona's hands. And if you take a look at the top teams and what games they have to play this midweek, Real Madrid traveled to Cadiz, Sevilla traveled to Levante, and Atletico Madrid will be facing Huesca at the Wanda Metropolitano. But the best thing is that all these games will be taking place before Barcelona play their match against Hatafe. Real Madrid and Sevilla's games will be taking place later on today while Atletico Madrid play three hours before Barcelona kick off at the Camp Nou. So Barcelona will be going into that match knowing the results of the other teams. And if you take a look at our opponents Hatafe, they are currently in 15th place in La Liga on 31 points after playing 31 games, which means they are currently averaging a point a game with seven wins, 10 draws, and 14 losses. If you look at the last five games in the league, they've drawn four and lost one, and they're currently four points off the relegation zone. Let's take a look now at our opponents in Hatafe. Hatafe are not doing too well this season in terms of their standards as one of the veteran teams in the league. But the last time we played them was back in October at the beginning of the season where we did lose 1-0 at their stadium with a Jaime Meta penalty. I believe that was conceded by Frankie de Jong. If you take a look at the lineups on the night, Barcelona were playing a 4-2-3-1 season that we were playing early on in the season that didn't really work out for us. While Hatafe went with their 4-4-2 that they always go with. During this match, Barcelona had a lot of chances in that first half with Petri Dembele, Messi, and Antoine Griezmann. But they couldn't finish their chances. In the end, Hatafe picked up all three points. Let's take a look at Hatafe's last 
last games in all competitions. In their last match, they drew 0 0 with Real Madrid. They lost to Cadez 1 0. They drew 0 0 with Osasuna. They drew 1 1 with Elche. They drew 0 0 with Atletico Madrid. They lost to Real Valladolid 2 1. And they beat Valencia 3 0 back in February. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because on February 27th, when they beat Valencia 3 0, that was their last win in all competitions. As you can clearly see, they have drawn a lot of games 0 0, 1 1, losing games to relegation candidates as well. They've been on a very, very poor run. Now, the three matches I want to take a quick look at and analyze is their 0 0 draw with Real Madrid, their 0 0 draw with Atletico Madrid, and their 3 1 win against Valencia. Let's start off with their 3 0 win against Valencia back in February with Arambe, Jaime Mata, and Carlos Alenia scoring for Hetafe after a Diacabe red card in the 50th minute. You can see the lines of both teams on the screen right now. They both went with a 4 4 2. They're both very compact. It was basically the park of the bus for both teams who was going to score more goals first. And it was Hetafe who broke down the team first, scoring in the 40th minute after that Diacabe red card. The floodgates started to open for Hetafe as Valencia were down to 10 men. Alenia got his first goal for Hetafe and got all the three points as well. Let's take a look now at their nil nil draw against Atletico Madrid with both teams on the night playing a very, very compact 4 4 2. Again, both managers, Diego Simeone and Bordel, have to play very, very similar football 4 4 2, compact, only attack when you have to attack. But in this case, Simeone decided to go with a 4 1 4 1 to go a bit more attacking than Bordel, is 4 4 2. In this match, Atletico Madrid were all over Hetafe, as you can see from their goalkeeper, Sofa Score Rating Gig, in 9.1. He saved every single saw. I believe he had like 15, 20 saves in the entire match. Absolutely ridiculous. He was the main reason why Atletico Madrid dropped points in this match. And lastly, let's take a look at their last game in the league, which was a nil-nil draw again, this time against Real Madrid. Very, very similar situation. 4-4-2 low block against the attacking side in Real Madrid. And in the end, they could not break them down and they dropped very, very crucial points. Overall, Hatafe, they are a very, very strong and compact team in the defensive aspect of the game. 4-4-2, they play very, very similar to Atletico Madrid, but they're more defensive than Atletico Madrid nowadays. But the two players I would look out for in this match are definitely Cucurella and Arloni Carlos Anina. He will be able to play this match. And Cucurella, former La Masia as well, played for Barcelona as well. They're going to be coming to the camp new with a point to prove. But on the bright side, one of their strong players is their right back, Niom, and he will be suspended for this match. Always causes Barcelona problems, but in the game against Real Madrid, he picked up his fifth yellow card and will be suspended for this match. But I do still expect a very, very defensive Hitafe coming to the camp new and with their nil no draw against Real Madrid. Madrid and Atletico Madrid. So Barcelona are going to have to be very, very clinical in this match in order to break down a very, very strong Catafe side. Time now to get into Ronald Coleman's press conference reaction. He did his press conference this morning. He was asked a lot of questions by the media. Let's get in and see what he had to say. So as I by saying that there are eight games left. We are going to go game by game. Really enjoyed the Copa del Rey final win, winning and doing it in the way that we did. Now we have to go and concentrate again and tomorrow against Catafe will be a very complicated game. The image of the team in the Copa del Rey final was really good. We have been improving things for a while and the atmosphere is very good. The European Super League I spoke with the president yesterday about the issue and he explained to me the position of the club but there has been a lot of movement since yesterday so I think it's better not to comment. I'm not the spokesperson of the club. I don't know how the topic will end. At the end of the day, we want what's best for the club and I'm not going to talk about the European Super League anymore. When you are a Barca player, you always want to win more. Winning the Copa del Rey can give us a little bit of peace of mind but that doesn't mean we should reduce our energy or our work. We want to fight to win La Liga and it won't be easy. Then Ronald Coleman was asked about leaving Pian, Stricky Puch and Junior Firpo out of the Copa del Rey final bench and putting in two goalkeepers he said that in the warm-up, Ter Stegen could get injured and I had to put in a second goalkeeper. If the second goalkeeper gets a red card in the game or gets injured, then I don't have another goalkeeper and then I have to put a player in the net. For me, that's just too much risk and I never want to take any risk and hopefully that can be understood. Then Coleman was asked about the pie to Barcelona as his agent was spotted in Barcelona a few days ago. He said that I'm not going to talk about the signing. We only want to focus on the game and I'm not going to talk about players who aren't here. Coleman continues on by saying that the pressure always exists at Barcelona. You have to win, play well, and fight for titles. We've recovered almost all the points that separated us from the league leaders. Now it's time to show that we can win this league. Then Ronald Coleman was asked, do you not like some of the questions that you're asked in your press conference are never always about the game. Usually there's like maybe one or two questions about the game after that's either Super League, transfers, all this other sort of stuff. He said, for me, it's more interesting to talk about questions related to the game, but I understand that sometimes there are external questions that are interesting to you. You can ask me whatever you want. I'm used to it. Then Coleman was asked about the player's fitness. He said, the physical data of the players is very impressive. The thing is to maintain the same energy in all games. We've had a very difficult schedule, but if we continue at this level, we can aspire to many things. Then Coleman was asked again about the Super League and the reporter asked him, what are your thoughts on PK? thoughts on the Super League. He replied by saying that I'm in agreement with PK's tweet. Then Coleman was asked about PK's fitness. He said PK was quite tired after the game that he played, which is normal after being out for a very long time. He was absolutely phenomenal in that final, and I think he can still improve his physical condition. Ronald Coleman was again asked about the European Super League. He replied by saying that we've been talking about a possible European competition for a long time. In the Netherlands, they always talk about a joint championship between the Netherlands and Belgium. It's a very complicated situation. There are many things in football that don't have to be changed. And finally, Ronald Coleman concluded by saying that I agree with what Pep said the other day about number of games 
Manders, it's absolutely unbelievable. You wait for art, listening to the managers and the players about the number of games for you wait for the most important thing is money, but you have to protect the players. And that concluded Ronald Coleman's press conference ahead of the match against Hatafe tomorrow. Let's get in now to the lineup predictions. We're going to start with the manager Ronald Coleman. I'm going to try my best to predict his lineup with there being a lot of games coming up and we've already played a lot of games. I do expect Ronald Coleman to make some rotation in this match and I've gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Ter Stegen and goal. A back three of Arlajo, Pique, and Langlet. Wing back three Roberto and Jordi Alba. Three of the midfield will be Busquets, Moriba, and Pedri. And the two strikers would be Messi and Antoine Griezmann. I do believe that Ronald Coleman will stick with that 3-5-2 system that he used in the Copa del Rey final. I thought the club played the exact same way as Hatafe, 4-4-2 low blocked. It worked then. Why can't it work now? I think he'll stick with that formation. In the defense, I think he'll bring in Araujo for Mingueta, give Mingueta a little bit of rest. Left center back, he could bring it up to D for Langlet, but I don't think he'll do that. Central center back will definitely be BK. He had an absolute masterclass on pain kills as well. In the right wing back position, I do think he'll drop Des and give him a rest and bring in Roberto. I think Roberto is 100% going to start this game. The question for me is where? Will it be in the midfield or at right wing back? He did bring him on at right wing back in the Copa del Rey final, so I do think he'll start him at right wing back in this match. Left wing back, I do think he'll stick with Jordi Alba. I don't think he trusts Junior Firpo that much. In the midfield, I do think he'll go with Busquets, Mariba, and Pedri. I do believe he'll give Frankie Young a rest in this match. He's been playing so many minutes over recent months. It is absolutely ridiculous. I do think he'll go with that Spanish midfield so they have good communication with Mariba, Pedri, and Busquets. With them all speaking Spanish, that way they can communicate very, very well in that midfield. And of course, they're very, very talented as well. Two strikers I believe he'll go with is Messi and Antoine Griezmann. I don't think Coleman believes that Dembele or Trincao could work in this match. Very fast wingers against a very, very low block. They'll have no space to turn into. Their passing isn't the greatest as well. So I do think he'll stick with Antoine Griezmann and Messi up top. So this is the line I believe that Ronald Coleman will pick for this match. Let me know what you think Ronald Coleman's going to go with in the comments below. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach. And that line's on the screen right now. I'd go with Ter Stegen and goal. A back three of Araujo, Pique, and Langlet. Wing back being Roberto and Junior Firpo. Three in the midfield would be Busquets, Mariba, and Ricky Poch. And the two strikers for me would be Messi and Martin Braithwaite. Now you might be wondering, why are you starting Braithwaite? Is he not injured? Yes, he is injured. And I think it's very, very big disappointment. He would have been absolutely fantastic for this match. If you didn't know, Martin Braithwaite got injured in yesterday's training session. He did sprain his ankle. He will be out for about 15 days. I thought he would have been absolutely perfect in this match. As at number nine, 442 low ball. Occupy that space in between the two center backs, giving Messi more space. But since he's not starting, I'll probably start Antoine Griezmann because, like I said before, Trincao and Dembele wouldn't really work in this match. I'd go with the same back three as Ronald Coleman as well. Going back, I'll definitely bring in Junior Firpo for this match. Give Jordi Alba a little bit of rest. Give Firpo for the minutes. Every time he plays Firpo, he does well. Midfield for me, you already know I'm putting in Ricky Poch ahead of Pedri. I think Pedri has played so many minutes over recent months as well, similar to Frankie de Jong. But if there's one player I would rest in this game, it would be Frankie de Jong. He's just he's just absolutely ridiculous amount of minutes he's played. Anyways, on my midfield, same thing. Spanish midfield. Let them communicate very well with Mariba, Busquets, and Ricky Puch. I think that would work very, very well. Right wing back, I would go with Roberto as well. Give Des some rest and also Roberto in that right wing back position. I think he could do very, very well. As we all know, as a right back, Roberto is very, very poor defensively, but going forward, he's very, very good. And in that right wing back role, he doesn't have to defend that much. He's more so going forward, so I think he could really shine in that position. So that's the lineup that I would select for this match. Let me know down below would you rather pick my lineup or Coma's lineup. Score prediction time. Time to predict the score for this match with the league title now being in the faith of Barcelona's hands again. I don't see the players slipping in this game. Of course, Hatafe did draw with Real Madrid nil nil to give us that opportunity. They will be very defensive in this match. Don't see too many goals, but with Barcelona just winning the Copa del Rey, I do see the team very, very motivated to push for La Liga. So I'm going to go with Barcelona win this game by two goals to nil. Don't see too many goals in this game. Of course, if we score early, the floodgates could open soon with what happened in the Copa del Rey final. If Hatafe score first, it's going to be very, very difficult for Barcelona to come back. But regardless, I do think Barcelona will win this game, and I'm going to go with Barcelona win this game by two goals to nil. Let me know your score predictions down in the comments below. So that was my match preview for Barcelona versus Getafe in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know down below, of course, in everything we discussed, but may I want to know what's your score prediction and we either pick my lineup or Coma's lineup and make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys some more for the live watch along. Hit the button on the screen, come and join me watch the game with me. Follow us right after the match by my match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>